It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather. And he who controls the weather will control the world. The European Union is getting nervous about atmospheric-altering geoengineering. That headline was from Gizmodo.com. More in a moment. Holiday hell. Travel chaos sees over 1,900 flights canceled and 6,700 delayed as air quality threatens New York and 4th of July looms. That headline was from thesun.com and is only the smallest sliver of what's unfolding. Yellowstone supervolcano magma chamber has far more melted rock than thought, like so much of the rest of the so-called science community's predictions. It's way worse than they thought. That headline from LiveScience.com. With that former headline of the Yellowstone supervolcano in mind, add this new warning from Matrix Media. New research shows climate change will increase impacts of volcanic eruptions. Never mind that climate engineering and the extremely powerful frequency transmissions that go with it, targeting specifically sensitive regions of Earth's strata, can do exactly the same. Yes, the manipulators of the Matrix have major plans for planetary mayhem. Many of those plans are, of course, already ongoing. Heat and smoke are smothering most of the U.S., putting lives at risk. Multiple sources for that headline. And for those that think it's just smoke they're inhaling with every breath they take, think again. Geoengineeringwatch.org has captured time-lapse film footage of blanket aerosol spraying operations being conducted directly over wildfire smoke canopies. Why? Any that are still trying to convince themselves that the aerosol spraying above already highly toxic smoke canopies is somehow benevolent, time to seriously recheck your reality. The report continues with this, quote, Much of the United States felt like a blazing inferno this week as record heat attacked the South like a blowtorch. In southwest Texas, near the Mexican border, temperatures reached an all-time high of 118 degrees. In Corpus Christi, on the Gulf Coast, the heat index reached a blistering 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Excessive heat warnings and heat advisories were in effect this week across parts of 14 states, and temperatures aren't going down much at night. Record high nighttime low temperatures are occurring all over the southern U.S., all over the world. Again, for the record... Geoengineeringwatch.org has warned about this for a decade and a half. Nighttime temperatures rising twice as fast as daytime highs. This is an extremely dire harbinger of the planet's now completely derailed energy balance. Statistically, the planet is now heating at the thermal energy equivalent of seven Hiroshima bombs per second. There are many parts to this puzzle, all of them from human activity, with climate engineering, weather warfare, at the top of the list, short-term, highly toxic engineered cooldowns at the cost of an even worse overall warming. And acknowledging this is not to in any way, shape, or form agree with or support all the so-called environmental agencies that are completely denying the climate engineering factor, not at all. But the reality of the matter is this, the planet isn't just warming, it's free-falling into an abrupt Climate collapse with climate intervention operations further fueling the overall process on top of countless other forms of highly destructive human activity. The report continues, thick smoke from Canadian wildfires blanketed the Great Lakes region and triple digit temperatures threatened to, quote, wallop California. Scientists said climate change helped shape the weather conditions that were causing misery and putting lives at risk from Mexico to Canada. There was no disputing the impact. If it wasn't way too smoky, it was way too hot. No acknowledgement of climate engineering, of course. Why would we expect otherwise? They then say this. Forecasters said the heat dome, a large high-pressure zone that traps heat underneath it, was responsible for the heat wave. Such phenomenon, they say, are likely only to worsen in the years to come. There you have it. The scheduled weather for the coming months under the now new normal. High-pressure heat dome, a term I have tried to bring to light for so many years. This is exactly the atmospheric condition that ionosphere heater installations like HARP in Alaska can and do create. Ionosphere heaters are weapons of mass destruction, nothing less. About the climate engineering wildfire connection, please search and view one of our most important video reports titled Wildfires Serve Geoengineering Agenda. Please help us to circulate this 
timeless and more relevant now than ever report. Current climate path will lead to collapse of Earth, say climate scientists. That's from the UK Independent and many other sources. This report states the state of peril facing Earth is so serious that on current trends, life on Earth will soon be incapable of supporting human life. Let's translate that into what I've stated on this broadcast so many times over so many years. No functional habitat, no functional web of life, no humans. Mosquitoes may be the exception. Bill Gates is taking care of that. Bill Gates factory breeds 30 million genetically modified mosquitoes per week. I'm going to do my best to put more bad news headlines in this installment of the bad news broadcast than any of the previous 411 episodes. Stay tuned and hang on. You're listening to the weekly installment of Global Alert News, the end of the world as we know it broadcast, commercial free, non-political, and covering the most dire and immediate threats we collectively face. This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org, the largest and most visited website in the world on the subject of covert climate intervention operations. If you want to strike up a conversation on the climate engineering issue with those around you, check the activist material section on the homepage of Geoengineering Watch. Shirts, hoodies, and super effective printed materials that we pass on for less than our cost of producing and shipping. Make your voice heard. Moving on, new from ecowatch.com. Ecological tipping points could occur much sooner than scientists expected study finds. From that report, Amazon rainforest and other ecosystems could collapse very soon, researchers warn. However, in contrast, the United Nations top science advisory body, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, has been more cautious, more deceptive is the right term. In its latest report, it said there was a chance of a tipping point in the Amazon by the year 2100. What a blatant, glaring, total lie by the largest so-called scientific panel ever assembled on any subject in human history, the IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, matrix-controlled so-called scientists whose job it is to pacify populations till the brutal bitter end. The Amazon is past the tipping point right now. And in regard to the collapse of the biosphere on every imaginable front, is there anything that's not happening faster than the so-called scientists said it would? Everything across the board, exactly as geoengineeringwatch.org has said it was for 15 years. From Reuters.com, climate environmental change puts 90% of world's marine food at risk, study says. That headline, by design seems to sidestep the fact that the changes which are occurring, aka total planetary decimation, are due to human activities in countless forms. And though climate intervention, aka weather warfare operations, are at the top of the list, there are countless other highly destructive forms of human activity, including the burning and consuming of 100 million barrels of carbon fuel every single day. We dump half a million barrels of DDT in the ocean off the LA coast. We've, we're dumping nuclear waste into the ocean. Geoengineering is destroying the ozone layer, which is raining down incredibly lethal UV radiation all over the world, killing insects and killing plankton, the bottom of the food chain in the ocean. There are so many factors here that the so-called science community never mentions when they label everything with climate change and try to frame it like it's some sort of partially natural process. There is nothing natural about the imploding planet that we are all passengers on. Nothing natural about it. And the marine life that has managed to hang on in spite of it all is about to be blasted with the radioactive water dumping from Fukushima into the Pacific. Just another shocking example of self-annihilation from the damned human race, in the words of Mark Twain. The IAEA is completely ignoring all of their own safety guidelines, nothing new. As I've stated on so many broadcasts, the so-called public protection organizations exist to hide threats from populations, not to expose them. All such organizations are owned by the Matrix. They are part of it. From CNN, more Make It Sound Like Nature Did It headlines. Climate event El Nino could hit the economy from food prices to clothing sales this year. Could, may, might. No could, may, might. The report says, although no retailer ever wants to blame the weather because it comes off as an excuse, weather is absolutely critical for most retail, particularly apparel and seasonal goods. What about food? Also, as I've stated on this broadcast too many times to remember, the environment has historically provided 75% of all global GDP for free. No more. From enews.net, 
never occurred before how the Arctic is sizzling Texas. Yes, the polar meltdowns are a near-term existential threat, but about the high-pressure heat dome that is broiling Texas and other heat domes broiling other parts of the world, ionosphere heater installations are even more core to the equation. Stay tuned. From InsideClimateNews.com, extreme heat is already straining the Mexican power grid. Reports as climate change is making scorching temperatures more common in the country, which last week surpassed the peak energy demands of 2022. Same happened in Texas. They're breaking their former all-time high energy demands. Because too many in industrialized militarized society think, no problem if the planet gets too warm, just go inside and crank the air conditioner up. And how long does anyone think that can be sustained with infrastructure that is imploding all over the world and a biosphere that's imploding even faster? Here's a headline from the other side of the world that paints the same picture from phys.org. Heat of hell, Saudi sun challenges pilgrims. And it's not just the ambient temperature, it's the scorching UV radiation that transfers a tremendous amount of thermal energy into everything, including people. And climate intervention operations, core to this equation, not the only factor, too many people trying to convince themselves of that. Again, we've been horrible stewards of the planet. Where would I even begin? It's not a this or that equation. It's all the above. The entire boat is going down. But how many still say they wouldn't do this to themselves? I can never count how many times I've had that premise for denial thrown at me. The they wouldn't do this to themselves narrative is patently false. They already have again and again and again. Malignant cancers eventually always exterminate themselves along with their host. Let's take a moment to consider the following shocking historical example of unbridled human insanity. Project Starfish Prime. The starfish test was one of five high-altitude nuclear tests grouped together as Operation Fishbowl within a larger Operation Dominic. A series of nuclear tests in 1962 began in response to the Soviets' announcement of their nuclear testing on August 30, 61. Listen carefully to this nuclear nightmare. Only one of 2,400 total nuclear tests. Starfish Prime caused an electromagnetic pulse, an EMP that was far larger than expected. What a surprise. Always worse than they expected. They had no idea what this detonation would do in the atmosphere, but they did it anyway because there was no one to stop them. The EMP was so much larger that it drove much of the instrumentation off scale, causing great difficulty in getting accurate measurements of what actually happened. A dense overcast layer extended the length of the eastern horizon. A brilliant white flash burned through the clouds rapidly, changing to an expanded green ball of irradiance extending into the clear sky above the overcast. All that I just recited was from a witness to this experiment. And he continues, from its surface extruded great white fingers resembling cirrostratus clouds, which rose to 40 degrees above the horizon in a sweeping arc, turning downward toward the poles and disappearing in seconds to be replaced by a spectacular concentric cirrus-like ring moving out from the blast at tremendous initial velocity, finally stopping when the outermost ring was 50 degrees overhead. They didn't disappear, but persisted in a state of frozen stillness. This witness continues, all this occurred within 45 seconds as the purplish light turned to magenta and began to fade at the point of burst. A bright red glow began to develop on the horizon in a direction 50 degrees north and simultaneously 50 degrees south of east, expanding inward and upward until the whole eastern sky was a dull burning red semicircle 100 degrees north to south and halfway to the zenith obliterating the view of the stars. The condition, interspersed with tremendous white rainbows, persisted no less than 90 minutes. Again, all of this an eyewitness description of Project Starfish, the detonation of hydrogen bombs in the magnetosphere with no comprehension as to the consequences of what this would do. There's more. While some of the energetic beta particles followed the Earth's magnetic field and illuminated the sky, other high-energy electrons became trapped and formed radiation belts around the Earth. There was much uncertainty and debate about the composition, magnitude, and potential adverse effects from the trapped radiation after the detonation. There you have it. Again, no consideration of the consequences even to themselves. So when you hear someone say they wouldn't do this to themselves, tell them they already have again and again and again. So in reflection, for those that are still trying to tell themselves that the criminal cabals masquerading as legitimate governments all over the world, like our own, 
would never commit us all to the climate engineering insanity without our knowledge or consent. Time to wake up. Those that are still relying on the term alarmist in the attempt to marginalize any who are desperately trying to bring attention to very real and present threats, I can only hope ideology, preconception, and program normalcy bias is abandoned and replaced with an eyes wide open look at the wider horizon and the sky. There's no depth of denial that can shield anyone from what's already unfolding. On the subject of denial, here's a heavy dose of it from last week. This is from the current administration. Quote, the economy is getting better, end quote. What a blatant lie of unimaginable proportion. Again, unfolding global biosphere collapse is and will always be the bottom line. The paradigm of loot, plunder, pillage, and pollute is in its death throes. The economy we have known can't get better. It won't get better. It's imploding by the day. Though there is and will continue to be desperate efforts by the matrix controllers and their media lapdogs to feed the public's normalcy bias till the moment of impact. More in the coming scheduled chaos from businessinsider.com about the solar activity. This headline, the sun's activity could peak two years early, frying satellites causing radio blackouts by the end of this year experts say. Experts had previously predicted this shouldn't happen until at least 2025. They continue, but the sun's recent behavior suggests solar maximum will hit sooner than expected by the end of this year. Yes, so-called experts, the matrix-controlled experts that are paid to cover the tracks of the clinically insane controllers who are using Earth's atmosphere for a physics lab and a battlefield. Then, as the atmosphere completely breaks down and unravels, blame it all on nature and the sun. And the vast majority are all too happy to pretend completely out of control weather warfare isn't a part of the equation. Welcome to the asylum. Our now highly damaged atmosphere is from human activity, not the fault of the sun. Climate engineering and all that it entails, atmospheric aerosol saturation and frequency transmissions, the combination of which are the single greatest source of atmospheric damage at this moment in time. That's until the other 440 nuclear power plants go into meltdown when ionizing radiation will strip away what's left of the atmosphere and we will inhabit a spinning lifeless ball of rock in space, a true sister to Venus. On that note, as mentioned at the start of this broadcast, from gizmodo.com, the European Union is getting nervous about atmospheric altering geoengineering. Nervous? More like panicked, but far too late. Same theme from theverge.com, the EU, European Union, wants to crack down on rogue efforts to alter the atmosphere. Much of this is smoke and mirrors, pretending that the operations that are actually ongoing aren't, and then focusing only on red herring publicity stunts. Current efforts have been minor, which of course is, again, a blatant lie, but the report continues. The EU called for the international talks on how geoengineering should or shouldn't be used in the name of fighting climate change. The report continues, the risks, impacts, and unintended consequences that these technologies pose are poorly understood. Another lie. They then state, necessary rules, procedures, and institutions have not been developed. Again, more lies. At geoengineeringwatch.org, we have numerous government documents, one 800 pages long, from 1978 outlining global cooperation on climate intervention operations then calling for blanket legal immunity for all those involved calling for international cooperation even between otherwise adversarial nations that's how the game is played the report continues these technologies introduce new risks to people and ecosystems while they could also increase power imbalances between nations spark conflicts and raise a myriad of ethical legal governance and political issues that's a statement from a joint communication adopted by the European Commission. What they do in one place, the report says, might have implications for the whole planet. Might? There's no might in this equation. It's absolutely the case. And what happens when you climate engineer the entire planet? You completely derail every single aspect of the planet's life support systems. Every single climate catastrophe at that point becomes a potential liability to those in power and they know that and that's why they are so desperately trying to hide these operations the public finds out that nothing no climate catastrophe can be considered natural at this point what happens then do populations finally wake up and take to the streets with their proverbial pitchforks and torches we need to expose climate engineering we need to cause that shockwave around the globe 
Let's cover one more headline of total deception. This one from QZ.com. Here's the headline. In a way, climate change is a straightforward problem to solve. Really? A straightforward problem to solve? In reality, such a conclusion couldn't be further from the truth. The text of the report itself contradicts its own title. They say we have a very poor understanding of the local effects of dialing down solar radiation. Even the strongest advocates for the sulfur particle-based technology, and that's not what they're using, by the way, we know that from testing, say a lot more research is needed. The Earth's many natural cycles, water, carbon, and nitrogen, for example, would suddenly be disrupted. Rain patterns could change drastically. Agricultural production could dip. The chemical reactions between ozone and sulfur might cause the ozone layer to start rapidly depleting, which could be a serious threat to life on the planet. Oops, too late. Already there, and again, not just sulfur, aluminum, barium, manganese, strontium, surfactants, polymer fibers, graphene, we can't possibly know what else. The QZ report then says this. We need a global consensus before trying the experiment, considering how difficult it was to reach a consensus for a weak Paris climate agreement with voluntary goals. It would be nearly impossible, they say, to come to an agreement on a geoengineering project with so many uncertainties associated and with so many potential regional impacts. Exactly why matrix controllers first deployed climate engineering operations over 75 years ago without public knowledge or consent. The QZ report then says this, realistically, then geoengineering isn't an option yet. Stop there. Only the clinically blind or willfully asleep at the wheel believe that one. Just look up. The difficulty, they say, is finding ways to cut greenhouse gas emissions quickly without sinking the global economy. That's not going to happen. It's done. It's over. And they say scaling up solar and wind power, getting more electric vehicles on the road, improving energy efficiency such as LED lights and better heat insulation, and promoting the use of emissions-free hydrogen as a fuel. Wow, where would I start on this? Total deception. All that was just stated about so-called green energy to the rescue, especially the hydrogen fuel part, total deception. Final excerpt from this report. We scienced our way into this problem. Can we science our way out of it? The missing solution, they say, is carbon capture technology, which allows us to keep burning carbon fuels without putting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. It's a rapidly improving science that could prove a bridge to a future in which we'll have enough capacity to create, store, and supply all the world's energy from only renewable sources. When you hear a report like that, you know you're listening to absolute total deception. Search and view the documentary Planet of the Humans for a shocking dose of reality on so-called green energy that isn't. And no, carbon fuels aren't going to save us either. That's what brought us here in the first place. Next headline, same theme. This is new from greenenergyjournal.eu. Sweden's green energy transition abandoned. The move is a major blow to what they call unreliable and inefficient technology. I agree with that. But what the report doesn't mention is that the move back to carbon fuels is also going to pound even more nails into our collective coffins. From BBC this, climate change, deforestation surges despite pledges. Listen to this. This is truly hard to comprehend. An area of tropical forest the size of Switzerland was lost last year as tree losses globally surged. 11 football fields of forest were lost every single minute in 2022, with Brazil dominating the destruction. Again, try to even conceptualize that. Only the willfully blind could think this trajectory of total insanity could possibly continue. From many sources, smoke is back. Here's where it is, and here's where it's going. And here's part of what's happening. A manipulated low-pressure zone directly over the Great Lakes is spinning the smoke into the targeted region of the U.S. Much of the eastern U.S. will continue to experience a waxing and waning of smoke canopy with very likely atmospheric aerosol spraying operations taking place above that smoke canopy. The Coriolis effect of the planet, the spinning of the planet, would typically spin much of the smoke toward the polar region, but that's not happening now. That's not part of the script at the moment. From numerous sources, over 120 million Americans under air quality alerts as wildfires continue to rage across Canada. For any that think the wildfires are scheduled to stay in Canada, think again. Next headline. This is from the SeattleTimes.com. The Pacific Northwest is primed for wildfire as officials prepare for a likely active season. Yes, they know where it's going to burn because the climate engineers control the spigot. That is the foundational factor in this scenario. The source of ignition is another 
subject completely. What is setting the template for these fires to burn with such ferocity? And that is climate engineering. Please, please search the engineering wildfire section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org and look at hard facts that connect climate engineering and wildfires. From the Climate Engineering Cover-Up Agency, AccuWeather.com, this dangerous air quality in Chicago as wildfire smoke engulfs parts of Midwest. The report says wildfire smoke from Canada pushed into the region by the means that I just mentioned and made the skyline disappear behind a cloud of smoky haze and what's on top of that smoke. As of Tuesday of this week, air quality levels were dangerous in Chicago. According to AccuWeather meteorologists, air quality levels will remain elevated for days. In fact, we're being told now that these forests are going to burn all summer long. That's the schedule. About the dangers of the smoke canopy that's being forced down to the surface by manipulated atmospheric pressure zones, it's far worse than we're being told. Official air quality testing by design isn't even looking for the most dangerous particles of all, nanoparticles, also not even testing for the worst elements of all, climate engineering elements. Can't find what you're told not to look for, and that's not my opinion. That was told to my face by top EPA officials at a closed-door meeting at the state capitol. Moving on, more on the unfolding planetary burndown. Canada's wildfire season is now a record setter, way, way past former records. The ongoing wildfire season in Canada is officially the worst on record, with more than 19 million acres burned and counting. And the fire season has only just begun. According to the Canadian Interagency Forest Fire Centre, more than 330,000 new acres of land have burned every single day in the country since May 1st. 60 days. 330,000 acres per day on average. Smoke from the wildland fires in Canada has now reached Europe. It's not just in the U.S. From ABC Australia... More plans for the land down under from the matrix manipulators. Winter fires leave authorities fearing worst for coming season. In the U.S. West, the climate engineers have just altered the script. On Monday of this week, some of the major scheduled weather sources like AccuWeather over the course of several hours altered the script for the scheduled weather for the next several weeks. From the former script of keeping regions like Northern California artificially cool by chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding over the atmospheric moisture that's been steered into the region for weeks, to a dangerous and bone-dry heat wave. Welcome to engineered weather and temperature whiplash, a hallmark of the shockingly visible climate engineering operations taking place in skies all over the world. And what is the majority of the population doing? They are completely caught up in causes and concerns that will mean nothing. Political circus in so many cases that will mean nothing when the entire ship goes down from biosphere collapse. So how are we to deal with the insanity of it all? On that note from Climate Action Australia, losing your mind is a proportionate response to the climate crisis. That's their headline. They say, blessed are the cracked, for they let in the light. That makes sense. Paradoxically, being in our own world can actually be a result of being more connected to the outside world rather than less. And here's this report's summary of those that are completely disconnected from the wider horizon. They say being in their own separate anthropocentric world inattentive to the experiences of the billions of other humans and non-human beings on the planet unaffected by looming existential catastrophe layers and layers of insulation made up of civilizational narratives perceptual blindness and physical distance dislocate many people from climate chaos and climate engineering those whose psyches buckle upon contact with this reality are the ones deemed mad this pathologizing is a defense mechanism employed by the so-called civilized to subjugate those whose minds stray from accepted norms. But again, blessed are the cracked, for they let in the light. Climate chaos and the dominant culture's response to it warp our minds even with geographical distance. Those already hit by climate impacts are seeing a greater physiological toll. And how many... How many refuse, even at this late hour, to look up? And yes, the depth of denial regarding shockingly visible climate engineering operations is a testimony to the psychological toll of all that's unfolding. Here's the title of a recent science research study published in Carger.com. Climate change influences brain size in humans. Who would have thought? 
from that report, climate change is considered as an environmental factor using multiple paleoclimate records, testing temperature, humidity, and precipitation against changes to brain size in 298 homo sapiens species over the past 50,000 years across regional and global paleoclimate records. Brain size in homo sapiens averaged significantly lower during periods of climate warming as compared to cooler periods. Geological epochs displayed similar patterns with the Holocene warming periods comprising significantly smaller brained individuals as compared to those living during glacial periods at the end of the late Pliocene. Humidity and precipitation levels were also predictive of brain sizes with arid periods associated with greater brain sizes in Homo sapiens the findings suggest an adaptive response to climate change in human brain size that is driven by natural selection in response to environmental stress. Translation, the smartest survive the challenging epochs. The rest don't. Perhaps some healthy protein powder will help our cognitive function, our brain size, and our general health. Or not. From VEG, FAQS.com, heavy metals in protein powders. Here's from the report. There are detectable levels of heavy metals in all types of protein powders, including whey. Consumer Reports ran a test and found that 15 whey protein powders all had heavy metals in them. The Clean Label Project later released a report after testing more than 100 commercial protein powders. They found detectable amounts of heavy metals and BPA in most products. What a surprise. These heavy metals can't not be in everything. They're nanoparticles. They're part of climate engineering operations in addition to industrialized pollution. But the greatest single source of atmospheric particulate pollution is statistically, mathematically, climate engineering operations. Our lab tests prove this. These nanoparticles infiltrate everything. They're bioavailable and bioaccumulative. They can't not be in everything. And indeed, they are showing up in everything. And for those that don't already know, polymer fibers are a part of climate engineering patents in the climate engineering mix. With that in mind, from sciencealert.com, this week, microplastics, which studies prove we are drinking, eating, and inhaling with every breath, may pose a serious danger to the intestine. No could, no may, no might. Reports, studies prove they do. By testing how microplastics affect human intestinal Organoids, small self-organized tissue cultures that mimic real intestines, researchers found signs of potential inflammatory effects, including the release of cytokines linked to human inflammatory bowel disease. Microplastics have become so widespread that scientists hoping to study their health effects in humans now struggle to find unaffected populations who can serve as control groups. Translation, every human being on the planet is contaminated with these elements because they are floating in the air column. Again, for those that don't know, polymer fibers named in climate engineering patents as a mechanism by which they can help to suspend the heavy metal particles. Question, how long can you hold your breath? You're listening to the weekly installment of Global Alert News, the bad news broadcast, installment number 412, July 1st, 2023. This is Dane Wigington, your host. Global Alert News is brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org, your largest and most visited website in the world on the subject of climate intervention operations known as geoengineering. The commercial free non political Global Alert News Hour is now broadcast on 23 AM and FM stations throughout the country. All recent recordings of this broadcast can be found on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org under the recent column. Geoengineering Watch wishes to express our deepest gratitude to those that have helped us expand our reach and thus our voice in this desperate last hour effort to sound the alarm. If you're on our email list, please put us on your email contact book so that our mail outs don't go to the spam files. Please help us to share the groundbreaking documentary, The Dimming, which fully exposes the climate engineering atrocities. The best way to share is by circulating the direct link to The Dimming by email directly from the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Sharing directly helps us to overcome social media censorship. When viewing our YouTube of The Dimming or Global Alert News or any other Geoengineering Watch video on YouTube, please subscribe, share, and comment, all of which helps us to circulate critically important data to a much wider audience. About reaching those that still aren't looking up, Geoengineering Watch awareness raising materials can be found on our homepage. Again, our only goal, to provide activists what they need to move this fight forward. High quality printed materials, shocking images, a picture's worth a thousand words. As the proverb goes, we have Geoengineering Watch hoodies to go with our new Geoengineering Watch shirts, 
high quality four color images on both sides the image of, of a military tanker descending down over the planet in spring the dimming sun is in the background with this caption stop climate engineering investigate and below geoengineeringwatch.org so they can find a credible source of data to continue their investigation scannable business cards bumper stickers all effective tools to help strike up a conversation on the climate engineering issue waking the masses people ask how do we stop this waking the masses that is the only way forward in this fight if we can expose it we can stop it from the inside out as we awaken our military brothers and sisters to what they are participating in literally their own demise if you're willing to share a picture of yourself with a geoengineering watch t-shirt perhaps at a gym farmer's market or busy street downtown etc please send us your photo so that we can post it as part of our activist compilation which is now part of our materials page the images encourage others to make their voices heard in this all-important battle to sound the alarm this battle will take all of us and i want to express my deepest gratitude for each and every individual that has summoned the courage to face this gathering storm to stand against the resistance from those around them, and to tell the truth. Moving on, more on the changing script for Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. Remember last week's Major Matrix media headlines acknowledging how cool California had been so far this year? Engineered weather and temperature whiplash here again from sfgate.com. Major heat risk expected to impact Northern California. The National Weather Service warned that a major heat risk is forecast aka scheduled to impact the region late this week into the holiday weekend the weather service's warning of the heat risk in sacramento valley in particular historical temperature patterns of tiered temperature zones that were cooler in the north and warmer in the southern regions are no more what global surface temperature maps now reveal are targeted zones of surface heat and surface cool zones that often have no correlation to their latitude or their proximity to oceans this new report from Fox News. Historic heat wave killed hundreds two years ago as it baked the Pacific Northwest in 110 plus degree heat. I'm resurrecting this report because it shows the degree to which with an ionosphere heater induced high pressure heat dome, they can literally fry regions of the planet. Parts of the British Columbia coast actually reached 121 degrees Fahrenheit, fully 60 degrees above normal. That would be like Redding, California, this time of year being about 160 degrees. Think about that. More headlines. Deadly heat roasts Texas, again under a high-pressure heat dome. This pattern, sometimes known as a heat dome, that's what the report actually states, is responsible for the recent searing heat. Due to several atmospheric factors, the heat dome has remained stubbornly stuck in place, allowing areas caught under it to bake to worsening levels each day. This is exactly like the, quote, ridiculously resilient ridge parked over California for so many years. And none of the so-called climate science community will admit to the existence of ionosphere for heaters. And this technology is not secret or disputed. It's simply denied by those who are paid to deny it. From the Miami Herald, 115 degree heat index prompts one Florida sheriff to ask criminals to postpone crimes. Good luck on that. Let me plow through a series of headlines. Some may be somewhat redundant, but I'm trying to give an overall picture from different sources of how bad it is and how fast it's getting bad and how much it's affecting virtually everything that allows us to live on this planet. From MissouriIndependent.com, drought hits the Midwest threatening crops and the world's food supply. California and much of the Western United States ease out of drought conditions. Again, toxic rain doesn't bring forests back to life. The Midwest, it says, though, has fallen victim to a dry hot spell that could have devastating consequences for the world's food supply. From CNN, deadly Texas heat is spreading and it will only get hotter. Not a forecast, that's the scheduled weather. From CNN again, Texas nighttime temperatures are a symptom of a new, more dangerous kind of heat wave. This is about the nighttime lows that aren't going down. We have in Northern California, in so many cases, the sun goes down but the temperatures don't. If there's no cloud moisture for them to chemically nucleate or no pressure zones to push in some cooler air from the coast, sun often goes down, temperatures don't. This is indicative of an atmosphere that is trapping far more heat than what is escaping back into the atmosphere, the upper atmosphere, back into space. And that is a direct result of the thickening of greenhouse gases, not just CO2, but methane, nitrous oxide, and heat-trapping climate engineering elements 
that can cause short-term highly toxic cooldowns, either through chemical ice nucleation of cloud moisture or the direct blocking of the sun during the day. But those elements trap heat at night in addition to poisoning soil microbiome, root systems, thus facilitating the die-off of forests, which further heat the planet. The downstream consequences of climate engineering and all that it entails are almost inconceivable. It is derailing and disrupting the entire climate system, planetary life support systems, and this is part of why nighttime temperatures are rising so quickly. As I stated earlier in this broadcast, the thermal energy buildup on the planet right now is equivalent to the heat energy contained in seven Hiroshima bombs per second. Most of that has gone to the oceans. The oceans are superheating, and that is killing off the oceans. Oceans die we die. All of this is a part of the sinking ship. Half the ship doesn't sink. The entire ship sinks. And too many people, especially in first world nations, think somehow that their affluence will keep them immune to what's unfolding, as if their half of the boat won't sink. That's not how it works. From USA Today, millions expected to suffer as heat dome expands beyond Texas. How often do we hear that term now? High pressure heat dome. We hear other new terms we never heard in decades past. Bomb cyclone, rapid intensification, flash drought, flash freeze, flash everything climate related. Welcome to climate engineering. From CTV News, some are set to be sweltering for most of the country. That's from Environmental Canada. They are already telling you that the fires are going to burn all year long, pumping the atmosphere full of smoke, which they will then push down onto the surface with heat domes that hold the air on the ground. From the nation.com, brace yourself. Canada wildfires are only intensifying. Exactly what I just mentioned. Canada is facing the most treacherous wildfire season in its history. It's only going to intensify as the summer continues. That's what the report says. Yes, they know, don't they? All major sources parroting what the matrix controlled script states that's put out by the so-called climate science community. From TheVerge.com, heat waves could trigger energy shortages across two-thirds of North America. They're already warning you. Two-thirds of the North American continent could face electricity shortages when temperatures spike this summer. The warning came from the U.S. Energy Information Administration, that's the EIA, which cited an analysis by the nonprofit North American Electric Reliability Corporation. Most of the central and western U.S. and New England and Ontario, Canada are at elevated risk, according to the analysis. Energy shortages are a problem when hotter than normal summer temperatures cause electricity Electricity demand is skyrocket, that's true, but also infrastructure is crumbling. People crank up their con- air conditioning, mentioned this earlier, putting greater pressure on the grid. Can't continue, won't continue. And I fully understand that so many will deny what's unfolding until the moment of reckoning, but that moment draws perilously near. More headlines. This one from the newlead.org. Wildfire smoke tied to thousands of deaths. That's a gross understatement. It's far more than that. And billions in economic losses, researchers warn. Economic anything doesn't matter. Doesn't matter on a dead planet. Matters not at all. How clear can that possibly be at this point? This new report talks specifically about PM 2.5, 2.5 microns. As stated earlier in this broadcast and so many other times, climate engineering elements exponentially smaller, not tested for by any official source, far more bioavailable, far more bioaccumulative, far more dangerous, infiltrate into everything. It's in every breath we take. How could anything be a greater and more immediate threat than not being able to inhale without sucking up aluminum, barium, strontium, manganese, surfactants, polymer fibers? None of this is looked for by any official agency and no particles smaller than 2.5 microns, which is like a boulder compared to a nanoparticle which 100,000 can fit across the width of a single human hair. And recent science study states we could be inhaling as many as 20 million of these particles with every breath we take. I'm not asking anyone to believe me. I'm asking you to actually research what's presented on this broadcast. From the UK Guardian, China issues heat stroke alert amid historic heat wave. And about Matrix Media News... The Chinese news is literally exponentially better covering far more global issues, dire issues, than all of the U.S. matrix media stations. I don't care what political stripe they wear. Chinese news better. How pathetic is that? From MSN.com, humans approaching limits of survivability as sweltering heat waves engulf parts of Asia. More headlines of the overall insanity from APNews.com. Climate change leads to growing risk of mosquito-borne viral diseases. 
EU agency says. Remember the Bill Gates headline I covered earlier? The 30 million mosquitoes a week Bill Gates is pumping out? I wonder what they're carrying around with them. What do you think? More headlines on the heat and where it's going. An industrialized civilization is a heat engine. How clear can that be at this point? And that heat, so much of it, has been going into the oceans, which is causing the oxygen content in the oceans to plummet. It's causing algae blooms, all of which is killing our seas. From the UK Guardian, the sudden warming of Britain's seas will tear through ocean life like a wildfire. From that report, what happens when the chill of our seas turns to a soupy stew? Fragile ecosystems will be destroyed and food sources for wildlife will disappear. The sea is the home of the greatest biomass of life on Earth and our oceans are dying, turning to Canfield Ocean. And so many are, again, caught up in scripted political theater on U.S. Matrix media sources. More on this same theme, dead oceans. From businessinsider.com, what's killing the sea lions on some of America's safest beaches? Question mark. California Central Coast beaches are littered with dead dolphins and sea lions. This is a follow-up from a report I covered on the last broadcast as well. Large marine mammals are suffering from the effects of currently blooming neurotoxin-producing algae. Exactly what I just stated. The toxin causes disorientation, bulging eyes, muscle spasms, seizures, and is later fatal. We thought last year's domoic acid algae event affecting Seals along the California coast was tragic. This year's event is even more horrific, and the year's just starting. Our beautiful beaches are littered with sick, dying, and diseased sea lions and dolphins. Come to the beach for your holiday. What a joy. From CNN, thousands of dead fish have washed up on Thai beaches. Remember the fish that just washed up on Texas beaches and Florida beaches and all over the world? This is happening. And we see very few of these headlines. All we see is, again... Democrats this, Republicans that. What a truly twisted society we live in. From AccuWeather.com, forecasters suggest marine heat waves this summer. It's going to get worse. That heat's going to go somewhere. It doesn't just go away. And climate engineering and the attempt to mask it, to hide it from the population, is making it far worse overall, not better. From severeweather.eu, a stratospheric wind anomaly is developing over the equator, expected to impact the weather along the El Nino in the next winter season. And about this warning of yet another climate anomaly, nothing, absolutely nothing regarding what is unfolding with Earth's climate and life support systems is natural at this point. Global climate engineering operations are core to this equation, but absolutely not the only factor. Again, every form of human activity that affects Earth's energy balance and climate system is a part of the problem. Moving on, more on the high pressure heat domes and the decimation they create. New from BBC, this is in British Columbia. Heat wave cooks fruit crops on the branches in sweltering Okanagan and Fraser Valleys. Up to 75% of some fruits too damaged to sell, according to farmers. Remember I just covered the peaches from Georgia that aren't going to be the whole crop lost. The heat wave that scorched Western Canada, severely damaged fruit crops and major growing regions saw multiple days of temperatures above 40 degrees C. That's about 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So translation, Canada's crops are baking in extreme heat and being fried by extreme UV radiation while Southern California was at the time in the 60s. Here's a bigger problem that very few people know about. From Newsweek.com, the hidden underground lake in the center of the U.S. threatening farming. A huge hidden underground lake spreads throughout the center of the U.S. supporting farming across the Great Plains and providing drinking water for millions, but the ongoing drought is threatening to dry it up. How many knew that that drought was even occurring? They only focus on California. That's where they were meant to focus and to be put back to sleep because of the toxic rain that was allowed to fall on California this year. The Ogallala Aquifer is one of the largest in the world, lying beneath the U.S. states of South Dakota, Nebraska, Wyoming, Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Texas. Use of the aquifer for agricultural purposes started after World War II. It makes up about 30% of the groundwater used for irrigation in the U.S., while providing drinking water to over 80% of the people living across the Great Plains. But the crucial water source is drying up. The situation mirrors that of Lake Mead and Lake Powell, the Colorado River reservoirs in the West, which are at dire risk of drying up as drought grips the region still amid climate change. There's, there's runoff this year, but that hasn't changed the overall picture. That's simply meant to put people to sleep so that they can't as easily see the oncoming train. And how many people think that with aquifers, we just need a wet winter season and everything's fine? 
Absolutely not the case. In fact, many aquifers or a number of aquifers are actually not recharge aquifers at all. They can be on alluvial fans. That's a geologic feature. They're not recharge areas at all. They can be left over from the Ice Age, literally. In the case of the Ogallala, if it were to completely dry up, science studies indicate it would take at least 6,000 years to replenish naturally with normal rainfall. 6,000 years. We have radically overshot our ability to live on this planet. Another headline from the Olive Oil Times. Dot com. Once again, olive growers in western Mediterranean face severe drought. The climate engineers control the spigot. Don't forget that. From CBS News, Himalayan glaciers are melting faster than ever, and scientists say it's going to affect us all. Again, half the ship doesn't sink, the whole ship sinks. From weather.com, photos, the, this glacier in the Swiss Alps gets tucked into bed every summer. What's that about? They cover the glaciers with tarps, as if that's really going to alter the outcome much. They suggest the same for the polar regions as if that's even feasible from the so-called science community. From the South Florida Sun-Times, this living on the edge, South Florida's ongoing battle with sea level rise just beginning, accelerating very rapidly. It only takes about another foot and it will start to become impossible to hide the severity of what's unfolding. And there are other factors which further compound the problem. Let's not forget that some coastal cities like New York are not only dealing with sea level rise, the entire city is sinking from the immense weight of the human constructs. It's literally sinking under its own weight. And New York City is not the only city that's sinking. One of the most well-known sinking cities is Mexico City, which has sunken by 10 meters, 33 feet in the last century. Venice, Italy, Mumbai, India, Lagos, Nigeria, Houston, Texas, Virginia Beach, Virginia, Miami Beach which I just covered, Jakarta, Indonesia, Bangkok, Thailand. The list goes on. And keep this in mind that soon, very soon, there will be so many converging cataclysms in so many locations that no one will be able to help anyone, and that's when the fun really starts. That's when Mad Max hits. More headlines from the Wall Street Journal. Deadly fungal infections confound doctors. They say, quote, it's going to get worse. Consider and remember, all those atmospheric particles that are floating around, those are fungal proliferation platforms. Keep that in mind. From the Euronews.com, flu-like symptoms from toxic algae along the Mediterranean. From KSN.com, five Kansas lakes elevated to blue-green algae warning status. This is the tip of the proverbial iceberg. The planet's life support systems are absolutely, completely unraveling. The planet is broken. There's no going back. What remains to be known is whether or not any part of Earth's remaining life support systems can be salvaged. I'm acutely aware that such statements are not the please end on a happy note conclusions our society is programmed to expect or even demand. The former paradigm is over. Any attempt to try and hang on to it while keeping one's eyes wide shut in regard to the wider horizon will only magnify the misery. Fully facing the gathering storm is the only source of solace. Never forget the hallmark of a healthy mind is an unyielding willingness to face the unspun truth, no matter how dire that truth is. How many, even now, are desperately striving to reach some milestone of material gain or societal status or social setting? There is no there, there. There is only here, now. How much more grounded would perspectives be if we all remembered and reminded ourselves every single day that life is a seasonal occupation? At best, the season is short. Because of the converging catastrophes that are now closing in from every direction and accelerating, the season of life for all of us is hanging in the near-term balance. So what should we focus on? What justifies our efforts, our attention? The endless program pursuit of personal pleasures until the bell rings and the game is over? Or... Fully focusing the time we yet have on a life of unshakable solace and meaning, a life dedicated to the whole on which all of our lives and our children's completely depend. No matter what we face, our state of mind is a choice. It's a perspective, a philosophy, a faith. All we are ever responsible for is to do our best, to strive to make a difference for the better regardless of the circumstances we find ourselves in. The correct use of the only thing we can ever truly call our own, our God-given will, that is our responsibility. That is our obligation. If we but hold to this path, the story ends well, no matter what comes. Never forget that. What's unfolding won't seem real 
until it is. We must prioritize. What's the biggest hole in the bottom of the boat at this moment in time? What's taking place in our skies? And it's nothing short of weather and biological warfare. It is negatively affecting virtually every thread of life, all life. There's no place to hide from it. Short of nuclear cataclysm, the ongoing aerosol spraying and microwaving of our atmosphere is the greatest and most immediate threat we collectively face. Check the activist suggestions link on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org for specific input on how you can help to move this fight forward. Please make your voice heard. Make every day count. Never yield ever. Until next week, this is Dane Wigington from geoengineeringwatch.org.